vehicle to vehicle or vehicle to infrastructure. Uh, they're kind of summarized as V to X, vehicle to everything, and they're coming relatively soon. The idea is to connect cars to each other, to traffic signals coming up ahead, to uh, master traffic control centers that every metro has these days, even to pedestrians and bicycles that are near you. It's about time. Bicycle coming from the left. Why does a smarter driver care? Well, the U.S. Department of Transportation says that if V to V was widespread, we could see an 80% reduction in car crashes leaving out those that involve driver impairment. Put another way, that's saving 20,000 of the 37,000 annual auto deaths in this country. But all that talking is going to require some kind of communication network, wireless, TBD. And it's a very big discussion these days. First, there's 5G. Now, you know 5G is coming to power our mobiles, but it's going to be used in a lot of things. It operates in the 28, 37, and 39 gigahertz bands. Very high frequency stuff, at least here in the US. And is not due in any real commercial deployment till at least 2020. Then there's DSRC, dedicated short range communications. It's a cousin of Wi-Fi, hence its technical name, 802.11p. Notice the similarity to your 802.11 at home. It operates in the 5.9 gigahertz band, much lower than 5G. And that's not too far from some 5 gigahertz stuff you probably already use in Wi-Fi gear around your house. Unlike 5G, DSRC is just slightly here now. General Motors is offering it in the 2017 CTS already. But there's not a lot for it to talk to. Now note a fundamental difference here. 5G is cellular, the kind that already covers wide areas and metro areas. DSRC, being Wi-Fi, is a shorter range technology. Though when enough cars have it, it also has a lot of reach because they have a mesh. Now these two are going to be judged on a lot of criteria, but there are a handful I want you to think about. First is bandwidth. Bandwidth is when you've got a really big pipe of radio frequencies, a wide slice of them. That's particularly good for moving uh, very large, rich data like video, of course, or also optical signals coming off a camera or a high-resolution sensor. Now, don't confuse bandwidth with speed. It's easy to do, but it's a different thing. Speed is better measured by what's called latency. That is the amount of time it takes for a signal to be transmitted and then received by a device on the other end. That can be very important in vehicles where a car ahead says, I'm braking, and the cars behind want to know that right away. Then we get to this area of dedication. 5G obviously will not be dedicated just to car use. It's going to be used by everything wireless once it rolls out. DSRC could be used only by cars. Right now, that's how it's been envisioned. But I can tell you the wireless industry of mobiles and such, they want to share that with cars because it's really good spectrum. It works really well. There's a discussion and a battle going on right now between those industries and regulators. And there's reliability. You want to have absolute reliability in vehicle to X communications. Now, sometimes your phone has no bars. Sometimes it has five bars, but still nothing's happening. That's not acceptable in the vehicular area. Now, solving this involves a lot of technical considerations that are beyond our scope. But know that this will have to be the most reliable wireless platform ever rolled out to a consumer product. And of course, it always comes down to cost. Now, it's hard to cost compare 5G to DSRC right now. This is really early days. But the cost to put it in a vehicle is not just going to be the price of those modules for each standard, but also how soon do you move? If a car maker is putting in DSRC modules now, like a couple we mentioned, but then later finds that 5G won the day and they've now got dual fleets and have to deploy a whole new standard, that may have higher cost of both engineering, the actual hardware, and of educating consumers and dealers what to do with it. More realities of modern driving revealed now at CNETOnCars.com. Click on Smarter Driving.